Good evening. I'm Kyle Clark. And I'm Alexandra Lewis. 98 Republicans in a room are picking the next congressman from Colorado tonight. They select their party's nominee for a special election to replace Congressman Ken Buck, who resigned his seat in Colorado's most Republican district. Most of the candidates are also running against Congresswoman Lauren Boebert in the GOP primary, hoping to win a full term in office. Now News reporter Jennifer Meckles joins us now from the Lincoln County Fairgrounds. And Jenny, one of Boebert's primary rivals could get a boost tonight or party in Insiders could choose a caretaker candidate, a placeholder who is not looking for the seat long term. Yeah, and we still don't know who it's going to be yet, guys. There were nine candidates when we started tonight. After two rounds of voting, we are down to five people left. And they're right now in their casting ballots for the third round. So hopefully very soon we'll see the results as this continues to whittle. This is all leading up to a very special uh, election and very interesting special election, as you mentioned, come June. Congresswoman Lauren Boebert trying to win that primary. She is not running in tonight's special election. She wasn't likely to get the party's nomination. And if she had won the seat, she'd have to vacate her current seat in Congress. And the Republican House majority is just too thin. So she's in a position where she has to convince supporters to support her in the Republican primary on the same day they're going to vote for whoever gets picked tonight to run for that vacant seat. Some of the guys running tonight are also in that primary. So if they win tonight, they could be on that ballot in June twice, which, as you mentioned, Kyle, would be a pretty big advantage. Now, as we narrow down to those five candidates who are left, four of them are running in the primary. One of them is running as a potential placeholder. So we'll see here soon after round three voting comes back. The whole way this works tonight, by the way, is somebody's got to get a majority vote. There are 98 people voting, so they have to get 50 votes. And nobody has passed, nobody's gotten past 30 votes yet. So we're still, this could be a while still. It might be a late night in Lincoln County. Um, all this is going to boil down to one ballot in June with two different races. The primary race is going to be top of ballot. This vacancy seat is going to be bottom of the ballot. What will be interesting, Kyle, is if we have somebody's name on both. We'll see. Yeah, and I mean, for the real political nerds, the real insiders, I think the surprise tonight is that Jerry Sonnenberg is not running away with this, that Ted Harvey is doing so well, at least in the early rounds of voting. And this is this is noteworthy. This is interesting, Jenny, because this has not happened in Colorado, a congressional vacancy like this in 40 years, not since 1983. Yeah, a lot of talk tonight about how historic this is in the first place, the second time ever in Colorado history. So it's been a long time since they've even had to do this before. So there's a little bit of history making happening tonight, too. All right. Back inside the building at the Lincoln County Fairgrounds for Jenny Meckles. Thank you, Jenny. <laughs> yes, we go. Three Glendale police officers are facing serious discipline after they were accused of mishandling evidence. Records obtained by Nine News show the city of Glendale has fired one officer, demoted a sergeant to officer, and suspended another officer for almost two weeks. The city manager says the three officers learned of their punishment a week ago, and they do have the right to appeal. Nine News was the first to report on the internal affairs investigation that found officers threw evidence into the trash on multiple occasions, in one instance leading the DA's office to have to drop a felony case. The Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office also has a criminal investigation into these officers. They have not brought any charges in their case. Two people are in custody tonight after another shooting at the old Doubletree Hotel at Quebec and I-70. That's now one of Denver's new shelters for people who are living on the streets. The woman who was shot was taken to the hospital. She's expected to survive. This comes two weeks after two people were shot and killed at the same shelter, and the city of Denver promised increased security there. They're adding eight full-time security guards, unarmed, and new metal detectors. They're also promising to check in with each resident each week to see how they're doing. Seven people have died at the former Doubletree this year alone, and police have been called out hundreds of times. Denver's housing department said the city gets thousands of calls every year for people staying outdoors no matter where they are. So it is, you know, our belief that once we get people inside, they are safer. We have people in one location where we can really help provide them support. The Salvation Army got $800,000 from the city for security at that hotel shelter that they run. This is part of a much larger contract. The Salvation Army tells us they only used a little bit of the security money. They spent months researching security options. Now that the city has taken over security, Denver is looking to amend that contract to take that taxpayer money back. Aurora police are looking for two people involved in a shooting at Montview Park. Officers were called out to the park this afternoon where they found a man seriously hurt and took him to the hospital. Police originally said they had one person in custody. Now they say actually both suspects left the scene. They're still looking for those two folks. If you have any information on what went down at Montview Park, 
You're asked to contact Crime Stoppers. New tonight, the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office is trying to identify seven people who are wanted in connection with two burglaries. The first happened on February 27th at a home off of South Rifle Street. The Sheriff's Office says these three men and one woman smashed a sliding glass door and took $6,000 worth of jewelry from inside. Surveillance video captured these images of the group outside the home. They left in a newer model silver Nissan Altima. Now the second burglary happened March 23rd at an apartment off of South Dam Street. The sheriff's office says these three men pried the front door open and stole a large amount of cash, a designer handbag, jewelry, and a computer. In all, the stolen items are worth more than $112,000. So if you recognize any of these, uh, well, really anyone from either of these burglaries, you want to call the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office. A man is accused of sexually assaulting women at his drug screening business in Aurora, and police think there could be more victims. Officers arrested 60-year-old Arben Duca nearly two weeks ago. Back in October, a woman told police that Duca sexually assaulted her at employee testing on Chambers Road. Police say two other women also reported that Duca had touched them inappropriately in 2013. Duca changed the name of his business last year. It used to be Whiz Quiz Employment Testing. Crime Stoppers is looking for tips. A fire got dangerously close to an elementary school and two daycares in Fort Carson. While Patriot Elementary School is on spring break, about 200 kids at the daycares had to be evacuated today. Tonight, that evacuation order and a pre-evacuation order for people living in the area have both been lifted. The fire has burned more than 100 acres so far. It's about 30% contained tonight. Fort Carson Fire says the wind made the fire that much more challenging to manage. Crews will be out monitoring hot spots overnight. Giving you a live look outside, we've got our eye on a pretty warm weekend. Lauren Robinson has your full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. You may be consuming more plastic than you think. I didn't think I was consuming any plastic, well. so yeah. A uh, new study out this month looked at nanoplastics in the human body. Nine News reporter Rachel Krause shows us how they could be causing some pretty serious health problems. Plastics are everywhere, holding the water we drink, the foods we eat, they're a part of our lives, even in the smallest of ways. So nanoplastics are very small microparticles that are formed from the breakdown of plastics. Cardiologist Grant Bailey knows those tiny micro and nanoplastics are popping up in more places. They've been found in beer, even the human placenta. What they're finding now is that nanoplastics are entering the food chain and they're entering the ecological cycle. So they're being found in animals and of course, humans who ingest those animals, we are also finding nanoplastics inside people. A new study looked at the presence of those nanoplastics from inside the human body, specifically in the plaque inside the carotid artery in the neck. And of course, not surprisingly, they found that a large majority of the plaques that were, uh, that were resected had the presence of several different plastic particles inside of them. That study found people with microplastics in their carotid arteries were twice as likely to have a heart attack, stroke, or die compared to people who had none. Dr. Bailey says that's concerning because heart disease is already the leading cause of death nationwide. And so the theory here is that the ingestion of microplastics is, is akin to smoking or air pollution or uh, having very high cholesterol, that it's another risk factor that increases a person's risk of, of heart attack and stroke. This kind of research is new. Dr. Bailey says we need more of it. To what extent do those plastics um, are causing this problem? To what extent do the plastics lead to heart attack and stroke and, and vascular disease? Plastics likely aren't going anywhere, but Bailey says knowing just how much we're consuming and the damage it's doing to our bodies can help find ways to reduce its impact. And we don't have to ban plastics altogether, but there certainly are ways that we can produce them and dispose of them uh, and use them in our lives that, that that mitigate the risk that obviously that their breakdown exposes to us over time. 